Boys, I found the UFC script. I found who they want to be their next star in every single division. I went into the UFC headquarters and I saw John Jones head into Dana's office. They were doing some madness, but I stole the script real quickly, guys. So I have every single UFC fighter who I think is going to be the next big star in each division. Of course, starting with flyweight, moving our way up to heavyweight. I'm not going to lie, guys. Some of these guys, I don't know if we can consider them stars, but the UFC is going to try their hardest to make them stars. Let's go to the flyweight division. And real quick, real quick, I usually do this at the end of the video, but you guys have been hella greedy as of recently. Look right here. 99% of you guys watch this shit for free. All I ask, like, I'm risking my life going into Dana's office with John Jones in there. I'm risking my life stealing this script for you guys. All I ask, leave a like on this video and subscribe with those post notifications turned on. Help your boy get to a thousand subscribers. Let's move over flyweight division i think right now you know me personally i think there's a lot of guys in flyweight that you could have here that the ufc should try to promote but right now it says on my list right here it says <clears throat> Andre Lima now if you guys don't remember Andre Lima he's currently undefeated he has been in the UFC for three fights now this boy's been pretty active he's fought three times this year we first saw this guy on Dana White's contender series when he went to a decision with another contender series guy who only had one loss at the time he ended up winning that getting a contract into the UFC he fought a few months later in March against Igor I think you guys all remember this fight. This boy Eager bit the shit out of Andre Lima, left a huge bite mark on his arm, obviously got disqualified, giving Andre Lima his first UFC win. And I'm not gonna lie, during that fight, I was like, I don't know, I don't know if Andre Lima is this big, you know, next thing. I thought this guy was pretty, I thought this guy was losing the fight to Igor until Igor decided to bite him, have a little bit of that tism show, but I had, I had Igor actually win that fight, but... He let the tism come out. He bit the shit out of Lima. Who cares? Moving back up, he fought a few months later in June against Mitch Raposo, another guy who only had one loss in his career. You know, this one again, I wasn't super impressed about it. This was Mitch's first fight in the UFC. Previous to that, he was on like the regional scene. He wasn't in the UFC. You know, first fight in the UFC ended up losing to Andre Lima. It is what it is. Then this is the this is the moment where I thought, okay. Maybe Andre Lima can be something was in his latest fight back in September 7th pretty recently here against Felipe Dos Santos in this fight this guy looked amazing Felipe Dos Santos also you know an up-and-coming prospect he also only had one loss in, in his career and that was against Manel Cap I don't know I think he looks really good in this fight and it says on the script right here that you know Dana has him as a good fun striker to watch fairly well-rounded you know, he passed a pretty big test against Felipe Dos Santos, and he did show different levels in his fights. So that being said, flyweight, Andre Lima. Let's go down to bantamweight division. This one, I don't even think I need to really tell you guys because, like, it should be a no-brainer. Peyton Tabit is the next big star in bantamweight, and to be honest, the next big star, I think, in the UFC, period. Right now, Peyton Tabit, 9-0. This guy, he's also a contender series guy. Back in 2023, he's been... He's been fairly active, around two fights a year-ish in the UFC at least. First fight against a contender series guy, Reyes Cortez. He was 7-2. and two. He got that unanimous decision, but then after that, nothing but straight finishes after finish after finish. He went in against Nick Aguilar. That guy was 7-1, and one, rear naked choke in the third round. Then Cameron Simon. Cameron Simon, again, another one of these big prospects in this bantamweight division. At the time, both of these guys were undefeated. Peyton Tabit ended up KOing this boy in the second round. The first 21 seconds of the second round with a straight left hand with ground and pound. Then, you know, they've been kind of shilling this boy. I'm not going to lie. They've been shilling him a little bit. They gave him Yanis Gamori. I don't know why they gave him Yanis Gamori. Yanis Gamori was by far the easiest layup fight of this boy's whole career somehow Yanis Gamori was 12 and 1 it took Peyton Tabit less than 20 seconds to knock this guy out and right now on my on the list that I stole from Dana it does say you know he's fun to watch he's 3 and 0 in the UFC all with finishes decent personality he might be a little bit gay but Dana has written down here that 
part of 2026 and 2027's game plan is to like recruit more gay fighters to get into that demographic. So starting with Peyton Tabbit, they're obviously going to push this guy. He needs to be more active. I see written down here too. But yeah, Peyton Tabbit, I think that's the clear number one guy to put in Bantamweight. Let's go down to the Featherweight division. Same thing with a lot of these divisions. Featherweight divisions, you could put a lot of guys here. Right now, Dana White, he does have a few guys, but one guy he does have circled. This guy has fought in featherweight recently fought in lightweight he's a monster he's on a huge trajectory as of recently and you know he's becoming one of the more fan friendly fighters we're talking about Gene Silva. Now, Gene Silva, his record, 14-2. and two. Both of those fights were decision losses back in 2018 and 2017, before this guy was even in the UFC. So nothing, nothing groundbreaking. But since then, this guy has gone on a tear with nothing but finish after finish after finish. I believe since 2018 up until now his only fight to go the distance was in the contender series against against kevin valajos and since then you know other than that this boy has been knocking out doctor stoppaging or just submitting all of his fights and it says right here dana wrote this guy is a gamer he is a modder he is badass featherweight division gene silva last fight he just went up in weight i believe it was short notice maybe like a week's notice fought drew dober ending up battering Drew Dober. So yeah, right here, looks like they're going to try to make Gene Silva a big star in the next coming years. Let's go down to the lightweight division. This one honestly surprised me because there's a bunch of people in lightweight you could put here to become, you know, a next star who they want to produce as a next star. But I kind of understand why they want to do this guy over some of the other big prospects. Dana has him written on the, on the page with a bunch of circles around his name, which is Ooga Booga all around him. So I think Dana is very high on this guy because of his appearance. The man I'm talking about is Mayatik Orobai. I understand why he put Ooga Booga because this guy does look like he's from the Stone Age. Maybe that's why they want to promote this guy so much. And you know, this guy's only loss was a decision back in 2020. Before he was even in the UFC, he made his UFC debut against Oris Medic a little bit over a year ago today. Submitted that guy in the second round. Then we saw him against Elvis Brenner. He went to the decision. He's fighting Matus Rembecki in about a month's time from here on the Taporia card. So we're going to see even more from him. But it does see like Dana wants to promote this guy a lot. 2-0 and in the UFC. He only has two decisions in his entire career. Other than that, he has 11 finishes. And yeah, I think it's more, you know, he does have a fun fight style. But I think... The main drawing factor that Dana sees in this guy is his just horrid face. He literally looks like a Stone Age fighter. He literally looks like the perfect definition of Ooga Booga. So I understand why Dana has him here. Let's keep going down though. We got four more guys to go to. Welterweight division. There is a bunch of names on here that I'm, you know, I'm trying to see what they said. But they're all scribbled out. He just has in bold letters right now, Carlos Prades. So it did seem like Dana had some other guys here, but it looks like ever since Carlos came out here and KO'd our boy, the leech, seems like Dana's very, very high on this guy. Carlos Prades right now, 20 and six, but he hasn't lost since 2019, since he was outside the UFC. All of his fights were outside the UFC when he was fairly young. And since then, he's on like a 12 fight win streak, something crazy like that. And you know, I kind of understand why Dana wants to promote this guy this guy he goes into fight camp he's smoking it up he's taking some shots here and there he goes in here he knocks out our favorite fighter definitely a super fan friendly fighter the ufc just needs to get behind this guy push him push him and i guarantee he'll become a fan favorite he'll kind of be like you know a more outspoken alex Pereira, in my opinion and that's not just because they're both brazilian but this guy he was on, again, another contender series, guys. You can see the UFC, especially Dana, they're doing a lot of favoritism for the contender series, guys. But regardless, he came into the contender series. He fought an undefeated fighter, knocked him out in the second round. Then came in here, fought Trevin Giles. First fight in the UFC, making his UFC debut. Same thing. The same punch he knocked out his contender series fight with. In the exact same round, he knocked out Trevin Giles. Then... Charles Radke, knee to the body. That was one of the most disgusting, you know, finishes I've seen to the body in a long time. As soon as Carlos Prada's knee Charles Radke to the body, he practically shit himself alive on TV. It was honestly disgusting. And then, you know, we saw the Leech fight. Same thing, round two. This boy loves round two finishes is what I've learned. And, you know, we saw him kill the Leech. I'm still not over that. I'm still kind of angry at Prada's for killing our boy the Leech, but... 
it is what it is. It looks like we're going to get a new Brazilian star in the next coming years. Dana's very high on this guy. And in every single one of his UFC fights, he has got performance of the night. So again, some more favoritism from Dana. And yeah, he's been fairly active as well. All of those UFC fights I just mentioned happened this year in 2024. So he's running through the division at a lightning speed. Three fights per year is pretty good. Plus his last fight was back at 305. So, you know, he could make it into another fight this year. I wouldn't be surprised if he fights one more time. But let's keep moving down. We have the middleweight division. This one's very fucking weird, you know. Middleweight division. This one has a bunch of like hearts and shit all over it. And it looks like it has, oh fuck me, it has some sort of stain on it. That's fucking disgusting. But it has bow. I'm not touching this shit no more. I'm gonna throw that shit over there. But we have Bo Nickel. Obviously. Dana loves him some Bo Nickel. I think Bo Nickel and John Jones is Dana's like favorite fighters as as of recently at least. But there's no there's no surprise that Bo Nickel's here undefeated. He came into the UFC again another contender series guy. He had a fight two times on the contender series. I remember it. He fought an undefeated fighter. So he submitted him in the first round, but Dana didn't want to to sign this guy because I think that was his like second professional fight, something like that. So he didn't want to sign him. He said, "Come back again, win again, and you'll get a, a contract." So he fought again, submitted the guy even faster in the first round. So he got his first UFC contract. He fought on UFC 285 again, first round submission over Jamie Pickett. Kind of controversial, but it is what it is. Then we see him on 290 against Volkanovski Rodriguez, Val Woodburn. After that, people were like, why is this guy so high on the card? Why is this guy so high on the card? People couldn't wrap their heads around it. Then we get into UFC 300. This guy's on the main card. Okay, he submitted Cody Brundage in the second round. It wasn't anything special, but it still happened. It's no brainer why Bo Nickel is here. But let's go down to the light heavyweight division. Someone who's actually fighting this weekend. We have Umar Sai. Umar Sai, 10 and 0. He's a France fighter. It looks like Dana wants to start expanding into the French territory with Umar Sai. And this is one of the rare times this isn't a contender series fighter. He's had a bunch of canceled fights, but he did fight short notice against Tuko Tokois. Got him out there in the first round. Did what he was supposed to do. Now, this weekend, he's fighting Dan Wood Chung. I think it's going to be relatively the same thing that we saw against the Tokois fight. And yeah, on Dana's papers, it just says, Umar Sai, we need more French guys. So that's why he's there. So let's go down, finish this up with heavyweight division. This one's a little bit weird. Dana, I don't even want to touch that. Dana says, Dana has written down here that heavyweight is fucking trash. There's no guys here. Fuck it. Put Mick Park in. So it looks like we have Mick Park in here. 10 and 0 he's tom asmel's training partner and yeah that's every single ufc fighter who i think is going to be the next star in every single division guys you have to help me out leave a like on this video and subscribe with those post notifications turned on i'm risking my life for you guys heading into the ufc offices and stealing such important documents like this thankfully john jones was there so he was distracting dana while i was borrowing these papers but yeah Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. And yeah, boys, there's really not that much else left to say, except for I will see you guys in my next video.